and welcome to Paul Reviews Everything. Today is a big day. We are going to switch out my front shocks. I got the Sun SR Sun Tour right now, uh, XCT. They are one of their most basic models, forks. And this is on the Diamondback recoil. I had this bike for hmm, maybe three or four months. I don't know. And this will be the biggest upgrade so far, so I'm very excited. So I'm not sure how much it'll improve it, but at least it'll look cooler. I'm getting I'm putting on um, some rock shocks. So that'll give my bike a lot more street cred. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna really show the comparison. I'll just probably express it, but one of the things I want to do is see how much of a weight difference it is. Even though the one, the rock shocks that I got are not particularly the light ones. They are the pecan hooder. I guess they're spring. They're not the air shocks, but they're supposed to be nice and rough and tough, durable, and, uh, and easy to maintain. So that's why I liked it. Okay, so I weighed this. I weighed the bike in a stock form, and it weighed 37.5 pounds. My last bike was a medium. This is a large. And it did. It had a rigid rear frame, and that one weighed about 30 pounds. And to me, this bike feels like it weighs a ton. So I was surprised. It wasn't as much as I thought. So that's interesting. Let's see how it goes with the, the new one. So I put it on the bike rack on my vehicle, so I can work on it. That way, everything is hanging off the ground, so it should be easier. Uh, the shocks came in this box. It says Rock Shock right on them. I heard there's some counterfeits out there, so at least I got a warm, fuzzy feeling. It came in a fish box. And there it is, wrapped nice. Mm -hmm. Check it out for pieces and parts. There's a piece that goes in there. That comes with a little wire tie. I already opened it up, so it came with some stickers and stuff, some instructions. Um, I pull them out, but I don't think I need instructions. So let's begin. I don't get that much time, so let's try and knock this out real fast. Alrighty, so I got the shock on. Uh, this is not really meant to be a video on how to install, but I figured it was a, there was a snag, and I want to explain to you how I resolved it. So uh, to remove the shock, uh, basically what you're doing is you're loosening this nut here, you're loosening these guys here, and then you got to cut it to the right size. So make sure you triple, quadruple check how long it's got to be. I actually cut it just a tiny bit short, but I think it's going to be fine. Um, I just use a hacksaw, do a line. I will compare it with the old shock and also stick it in place. Make sure you reassemble it, mark a line on top, um, and make sure you verify it with your old shock how it goes on. Now the snag that I hit was there is a piece, and I should have showed you this while I was doing it, but it was meant to be an installation video, but uh, there is a piece that's on the old shock. Okay, so here's the old shock. See, it's removed. Well, there is a piece, because when you, the new shock looks just like this when you get it, but there is a piece that comes on right here. It goes, there's a little, it's a little cup, I guess you would say. It holds the bearings in place, and it's fitted on really tight. It almost looks like it was permanently attached, but it's not. You have to remove it. That was a really a big pain in the butt to get off. I actually didn't think it came off. I took it to the shop. They didn't know anything about it, which is surprising. Um, but then I went on Google or on YouTube and found a solution. I'll show you how I did that. The, uh, the hack way to do it, the cheap way, because there actually is a tool that removes that little spacer thing. Well, not spacer, but that little cup thing. Um, but uh, you don't really need it though. You go over to your store, go to Walmart or somebody, hardware store, buy these utility blades, and you'll need a hammer. Okay, so what you do basically is you press the edge of this down in between the slot. And you can barely, you, it's so tight that you just get the very bit, uh, get the edge in there, and then you just hammer it in with your hammer. Doop, 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 doop. And you do it all the way around and uh, 
then once you get it all the way in, it'll probably give you enough of a gap to use a screwdriver. You can't use a screwdriver from the get-go. It's just it's too tight. And then from there, you ply it, you go all the way around, and you just kind of pry it off, and it'll come off. And actually, I was trying to remove it. It took me like two hours before I used, went to, uh, to YouTube to find the hack. And once I figured out the, the way to get it off, it only took me about three or four minutes to remove it. And then you just basically stick it in place, use a hammer to kind of stuff it down in all the way around, and you're good to go. Now, with knowing that, you probably have enough information to do it yourself if you're halfway decently uh, mechanical. Because it's not difficult to remove the forks at all. So I'm sure you're wondering, how is it? How does it compare? Well, it weighs a pound less, so it dropped the weight to a pound less. It has the shock lockout, so if you want to ride in the street, you can lock it out, which is nice. Which is right here. Lock out and just twist it. Ding. And that's all there is to it, to lock it or unlock it. On this side is your preload. You can twist it to make it harder or uh, softer. And underneath, there's the rebound. Under here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it, uh, it seems like it came, comes in pretty firm. Just the, the, pretty, the way it's set up. Um, but, to tell you the truth, I haven't, I haven't ridden it yet. And I vowed not to ride it until I get to a trail. Um, and it's been, the weather's been terrible ever since I put them on. Um, so, and actually this is, this is a, <laughs> I had initially started this video and then I dropped my phone and broke it. So then I couldn't really continue until I got a new phone. So it's been on the bike ready for about a week, <clears throat> if not longer. And I have not rid it yet. And I don't want to ride it until I get to a uh, trail that way I could do a video on how it feels um, as a first impression okay so watch for that video once I have it I will put a link onto it but the forecast for the weather is terrible and the way it is out here is the, the, basically the trails got to be dry it's been raining like every single day pretty much so the trails got to be dry so it has to basically not rain for about three days before you can get on the trail so watch for that video. Once I have the video, I'll put the link on, on here at the end, and you can watch it straight after. All right, well, thanks for watching. Paul reviews everything, and that is the Rock Shock. Um, Silver 30, I believe it's called. And so far, first impression, it seems nice. It, it looks pretty, I mean, it's not very fancy looking. Um, just down to business, you know, it's simple, and hopefully, um, it, it, feels, it feels good so far. I haven't read it yet, but... It seems like it's well built. And it doesn't have that lame sticker on it that says, only for trail use, which tells me this thing could handle anything. And that's kind of one of the main reasons why I wanted it. I didn't like that sticker on the back. And I wanted some rebound. The, 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 the SR, the SR, the Sun, the, the SR, S, XCT, has no rebound adjustment. So it's basically like a spring. And it has that lame sticker on the back. It says, you cannot use this for any real writing. If you own this, that means you're still a rookie. And the Rock Shock does not have that. Thanks for watching. Paul reviews everything. And once again, that is the Rock Shock. I think it's a 30 silver. <laughs> yeah, hit and subscribe. I could use some subscribers to this channel because YouTube got greedy on us. And I need a uh, thousand subscribers before I can... Uh, I can uh, get paid again. And don't forget to check out my kids' channel, Rachel's World. Which, uh, if you have any kids, they'll probably like that for uh, all kinds of fun content for kids. Thanks for watching.